What's the deal, Big Bounce? K Pop Top Box said, How y'all doing? Uh, still sick. I'm back to back. Like 94, 95 Rockets is going down like this and like that. Hey, shout out to the Rockets, man. They beat the Denver Nuggets. Um, you know, I was impressed by that. You know, I'm not, I don't like basketball, but I do support my hometown teams. So shout out to the Rockets. You know what I mean? And uh, y'all tune into the Texans on Sunday, man. We're going to see what they're going to do, man. I ain't going to lie to you. I think Jacksonville going to get them, though, this Sunday. I think so. But, you know, the boys coming down in that candy red this Sunday. So we're going to see what's going up. We're going to see what's going up with that. But uh, let's talk boxing. So Jose Benavidez Jr., <clears throat> the opponent of Jamal Trilo, uh, came out and said that uh, he's actually knocked down Earl Spencer's partner. Let's discuss it. So, you know, the rumor is he knocked down Earl Spencer's partner. Now, why is he bringing this up now? I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I don't. I, I, I guess because he got a fight and he want more attention. I don't know, bro. I don't understand why these niggas keep bringing Earl Spencer. <laughs> That's why I say they hate this nigga. They keep bringing this nigga up, bro. They keep bringing this nigga. This nigga. This nigga is at his ranch and, and wherever he had Texas, he chilling. They keep talking about this nigga. What was the what was the basis of him bringing up Earl Spence? Like, I don't get it, bro. This nigga say, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I dropped it on this sparring. Okay. You dropped it on this part. It's sparring, nigga. Like, I don't, I don't understand. It's like, it's sparring, bro. Anybody, everybody who boxed before knows it's sparring, you working on stuff. You know what I mean? You working on stuff. Now, granted, it ain't patty cake. You know, we ain't going south on each other, but you working. You know what I mean? So, you may be like, hey, hey, man, your coach may be like, hey, we going to work on, uh, you know, he, he going to work on his counter ability. So, you know, just just go all out and he going to, you know, look to try to counter you or whatever. You know what I mean? Today. And y'all might spot another day where the coach will be like, hey, he going to try to come forward, you know, and, you know, so don't make it easy for him. Like, bro, it's we working. You know what I mean? I, I, so, like I said, I ain't going to spend too much time on that aspect, but. It's just like I, I, I don't understand why this nigga day can get brought up. Bro. This nigga, and that just shows you how big of a star Hell Spitz is because he ain't even doing nothing. The nigga at the house, bro. Every time I look up, somebody talking about this nigga. Terrence Crawford talking about him, right? One of these YouTube dudes talking about him. People in the conversation bringing up Hell Spitz. You could be talking about some. You could be talking about something. Totally different. They bring up Earl Spence. Well, Earl Spence lost. Okay, nigga, like, what you... I don't understand. <laughs> Bro, I don't get it, man. I don't understand why they keep bringing this nigga up. The nigga ain't even fighting. The nigga at home. He chilly. He with his gal. You know what I mean? I follow uh his gal on uh Instagram. You know, they go to weddings and all type of stuff. You know, family trips. Like, he ain't... Because, you know, Earl don't post nothing on his Instagram. You want to see everything, you got to go follow his girl. You know, they be going on family trips, date nights, all type of stuff. Like, he he just, he with his family, bro. He ain't even, <laughs> his nigga, the nigga ain't even worrying about nobody, bro. He chilling. But he getting brought up. Yeah, 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 we are. Uh, I dropped Earl Spitzer's part, okay? And the fact that this is even a story, like, oh, and he's like, yeah, I got the video, okay? What does that mean? You dropped him as part, so that make you, that nigga know what he doing, bro. I'm going to tell you what I was at Benavidez videos again, right? Because you see, he, he he was with Crawford. He dabbed up Crawford, right? They friends now, right? So he got mad because Earl Spitz, because now I'm thinking about it. Elspeth, basically, he took he took what Elspeth said about him as a like a diss, because Elspeth said, "Hey man, you struggle with a one legged Jose Benavidez Jr." And I guess Jose Benavidez Jr. took offense to that. But nigga, you 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 got shot in your leg. You obviously not the same fighter. You know, you know what I'm saying? He ain't the same fighter, bro. 
Jose Benavides Jr. is not the same fighter since he got shot. We can agree to that. That's facts, right? So when he said that about Crawford, he wasn't saying that like Jose Benavides Jr. is trash. You know what I mean? He was saying like, you struggle a guy that got one leg. So if any person should have took offense of that, should have just been Crawford, right? Not Jose Benavidez Jr. They all just say, oh man, that nigga suck. He didn't say that. You know what I mean? Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. I said Jose Benavidez Jr. is not an elite fighter. He got one leg, which he still ain't no elite fighter. He's a tough fighter. You know what I mean? He ain't nobody you can sleep on. Like you can't sleep on cuz. You know what I mean? We got we got call we got call spread of space. You cannot sleep on him. But he ain't no elite fighter. He ain't he ain't nobody where you be like, oh, you know, man, I, I can get out of my bed and I'm a I'ma fight him and I'm gonna beat him. Nah. You definitely gotta prepare for him. But he ain't like trash. You know what I mean? Like he but he ain't an elite either. He just good, durable fighter. You got those guys. He's a good, durable fighter. Somebody you can't sleep on. Somebody you go definitely have to game plan for, come in shape for. You know what I mean? That, that's what it is. You know? But he ain't, like I said, he ain't no elite fighter. He ain't no guy where, you know, he can beat, you know, Keith Thurman and Mario Barrios and, you know, he ain't no guy that can beat Canelo and he, he ain't that guy, bro. And that's what it is. You got to be realistic. He's a tough, durable fighter. I went and watched that Danny Garcia fight. He was taking some, some shots. He got hit with some stuff in that fight. And I was like, man, Danny, Danny normally drop dudes with that. You get what I mean? Danny was landing that over here right. You know what I mean? He, he caught uh, Jose with that. And Jose... You know, you know what he do. He do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but they all spins get dropped and sparring. Like, who cares, bro? I don't even care if they said, I don't care who it is. It's sparring, bro. And that's why I be telling people. Like, I had somebody on my live ask me. They said, hey, I think it's Jay Will. He said, boss, you ever been dropped a spar? I said, no. I ain't never been dropped a spar, thank God. I've been buzzed to where I've seen double. You know what I mean? Or I couldn't see. You know what I mean? But I ain't been dropped. You know what I'm saying? To the point where I'm like, dang, man, I got, I, I got dropped, man. I ain't been dropped. I've been buzzed. Uh, but not drop to the point where somebody punched me and I, uh, no, nah. I'm very defensively responsible when it comes to stuff like that. You know what I mean? You know, I, you know, that's just what it is. Very defensively responsible. You know when when I started boxing, bro, I was like a defensive fighter at first. I barely threw no punches. I'm I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I barely threw no punches. I waited for the perfect shot so I could land it. Other than that, man, I was and my coach used to get pissed. He's like, bro, what the you got power. And then as I develop, okay, I start developing a little bit of offensive game. You know what I mean? But to this day, I'm not a fighter that exerts a lot of energy. You know? Nah. Uh, I wait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wait. You know, I wait for that time. <laughs> you know? But not about me. Let me get back on topic. I don't understand why this nigga keep getting brought up. Bro, every time I look up, somebody talking about your spirit. You know what I mean? They bringing the nigga up. Oh, man, hell. And Errol Spence. I was watching a YouTuber. He was talking about, uh, I forgot. It wasn't a YouTuber. It was a, a, what, a dude on Fight Hype. He was talking about Shakur Stevenson. He brought up Errol Spence. I'm like, bro, 
What does Errol Spence got to do with Shakur Stevenson? I'm like, bro, what the hell? Like, this nigga ain't got nothing to do with none of these niggas, bro. I'm sorry I'm using that word, but it's like, come on, man. Like, this man is, is on a, and it just shows you, like I said before, how popular this man is. This man not even worrying about no, he, he, he with his, he with his, his girlfriend, right? His wife. Oh, they got that boy that be mean mugging people. <laughs> hey, it's a little white dude over here. He be, I don't know, I think he uh, a little uh, mental. He likes to mean mug people. It's in his rich neighborhood over here, Sugar Land. I think he mental, because he like, when cars drive by, he stops and like flexes it. Mean mug, y'all think it's funny. But anyway, uh, all I'm saying is at the end of the day, I don't know the point of him bringing that up. Um, I think that's his shot at L. Spence. All I got to say is uh, be careful what you ask for, Jose. You know, because you might get caught in a situation where you might be fighting L. And I'm telling you right now, you know, once L. Spence and Terrence Crawford is done, I, like I said, I don't know who the winner of that fight going to be. Whether L. Spence win or lose that fight, if L. Spence decides Jose Benavidez Jr., we go fight, I'm telling you, that'll be the end of Jose Benavidez Jr. I promise you that. I'm telling you, I stand on that. I I, I, I win the bet, whatever. On that. That's what it is. I'm telling you. If L. say, you know what? You know, man, Jose, what's good, bro? Let's fight. I'm telling you, that'll be the last. And you're going to see a different. I'm telling you, y'all that talking. You'll see a whole different Jose. Because Jose like to talk. You're going to see a whole different Jose. It's going to be a more respectful Jose. Him and Meryl is, you know, you know, you know, I did just the inspiring and, you know, y'all, you know, he's, 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 he's elite and build a little bit of all that bull crap. Ain't going to be no, I'm going to queue up. I'm, ain't going to be none of that. I'm telling you. But like I said, I don't, I don't think Errol even do go backwards like that. I think Errol looking forward. He looking forward to fight Terrence Crawford. He looking forward to, you know, his next opportunities, 154 pounds. You know, like I said, Errol Spence got a... Terrence Crawford's at the end of his career. So Terrence Crawford trying to fight the big name so he could go out, you know, in style. With, with a good, with a good, but money in his pocket, right? We just gonna keep it real, you know. Terrence Crawford tried to go out in style. He tried to go out with, you know, the nice little chuck change in his pocket and, and, and sell off in the sunset. Errol Spence, he got, I say, he got like maybe three, four years, maybe even more than that in the, at 154. That's just real talk, you know what I mean? There's a lot of big fights at that weight. Uh, that he, you know, people go come see him fight. People go come see Eric Salupa versus El Spitz. People go come see El Spitz versus Brian Castano, Brian Mendoza, El Spitz versus Tip Zoo. That's a, oh my God. El Spitz versus Tip Zoo? That's a mega fight right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Tim Zoo has continued to improve. You know, at first I was like, man, Errol. But now I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a good fight. You know, Tim Zhu is a natural 154-pounder. Earl Spence. I mean, Earl Spence is a big guy, too. Don't get it twisted. But I just think that, you know, Tim Zhu being at 154 alone. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that'd be a good fight. You know, that'd be a dang good fight. Like, I'll go to that one. If they fought in Australia, Earl Spence versus Tim Zhu in Australia, I will go to the 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 the, the, the Crikey land. I'll go over there. I'll be over there front and center. Crikey, me on. Crikey, you know what I mean? You know, I'll be there front and center. You know what I mean? So definitely like that fight. You know, but man, this whole talk about Arrow, man, I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it, bro. I think. I don't know. I think a lot of people are jealous of Earl Spence. We just go call it like it is. I think they don't understand how he got to where he got to. And I, and I said this before. I don't think people respect Earl Spence as a fighter, bro. I think they look at him as like he a joke. 
You know, like you you hear some people talk about Earl Spence is overrated. Uh, he overrated. If he overrated, then so is Bud. Because last time I checked, uh, if he matter of fact, I say this: if he's overrated, then there's some dudes like Terrence Crawford that is not even rated. Because Earl Spence running at 147 is unheard of. Nobody has the run that he got. Fighting the fights that he fought. You know what I mean? And winning them in the caliber that he was winning them. The type of fighter that he is. See, and, and now I'm cooking. Y'all done, 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 done messed up. And, and the reason why, and I advocate for any fighter. If they did this for, like, with Terrence Crawford, I would do the same thing. You know what I mean? It's just everybody looks at Errol like he just, he, he, was, he just was fighting tune-ups or stuff like that. I'm like, first of all, Errol Spence has never fought a below A-level fighter since he got to that top spot. He ain't fought no tune-ups. You ain't seen him looking at, oh, Errol Spence wouldn't have fought no David Avenesia. You can't justify stuff like that. Now, granted, as a as a as a former boxer, you know, amateur boxer, me knowing that you know timing and rhythm, should he have taken a fight in between the Terrence Crawford fight? Yes, he should have, but he didn't. That was a decision he made, and he stood on it. It is what it is. But all I'm saying is, at the end of the day, spade to spade, keep it a thousand. You look at the totality of the circumstances. You know. Earl Spence running 147 is Hall of Fame. That's what it is. It's Hall of Fame. Right? He can make another run at 154. It's a little bit more challenging. Right? And I know I said in the past, like, um, you know, he could do the same thing at 154 than 147. He could. You know what I mean? But I feel like it's a little bit more challenging. You know what I mean? These dudes up there, 154. They not, they, and it's, it's, it'll be challenging for Terrence Crawford too. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to keep, we got to keep it a thousand. It's a, it's challenging for Terrence Crawford, it's challenging for Errol. At, at 154, it's killers up there, bro. And it, that's why you don't see nobody, everybody lost to somebody. Even Jamel Charlo, although he was undisputed, he lost to Tony Harrison. Everybody lost, nobody's undefeated up there. Ain't going to be no undefeated. That's why Terrence Crawford, he know that. That's why he tried. I got a video coming. Y'all stay tuned. Boss gone.